All right, good morning. Happy Monday. First mon first official Monday of November. Welcome. I'm your host and pilot, Uncle B. Welcome to today's Microsoft's blah, 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 Microsoft Flight Simulator live stream. We are back in the Uger 52 3M retrofit. Departing from Easterwood Field, College Station, and we're heading to Abilene. Pretty much we're in Texas <clears throat> today. We're just a little bit north uh, west of Houston. Here where the uh, Texas A&M. We're going to go right near their uh, flight test station. Here. Uh, so we're going to depart from runway 17. Uh, and then we're going to hang the right turn. Make a way for our, our first nav aid, which is a Vortac. Right there. And then we're going to continue on. Intercept that VORDME. And then we're going to head to a fixed point here, and then our second one there. And, excuse me, and then we're going to line up on runway 35 right and land here in Abilene. Excuse me, we'll probably taxi for a bit uh, somewheres. Uh, I don't think all the way over there, but we'll, we'll get there eventually. Uh, so that's what we got for today, folks. Tomorrow I will be, unless something changes, I will be on the farm with Mick. Good morning, Joseph. Uh, we're going to go back and we did some stuff Saturday. We got a bunch of stuff to do tomorrow, I believe. A lot of planning and a bunch of other stuff. So I will be on his stream Wednesday we'll be back Abilene and we're heading over to Midland. It'll be a much shorter flight. We're heading right over to this airport here. I do believe. One of these two. I think it's this one. Uh and then from there I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna skirt up to uh where did it go? Carlsbad. Yeah, from Midland, we're going to go up to Carlsbad here to the uh, Cavern City Air Terminal. Uh, and then we'll, from there, we'll pop, uh, we may have to go to El Paso and then across to, from there to, uh, but anyway, we're, we're making our way east, uh, slowly but surely. Um, so... That's what we got going on. So, I'll we'll give it a few minutes. See if anybody else pops in. How are you, Joseph? Nothing's changed since I saw you and Chris's stream last night. I'm still good. <laughs> Before you ask. So, still, uh, I, I posted the schedule for the week. So, what we may do Friday, if if it, it becomes apparent that we're not getting Sim Update 11 and everything until much later in the day, we're we're gonna go ahead and do the flight. Uh, we'll just get it get get it done. We'll do a Veterans Day flight. We'll fl still fly out of Bournemouth. Uh, I'll fly the P-38 if anybody wants to join in Spitfires or whatever fighter aircraft you want to join in. We'll still do that flight over there to Normandy. Um, and then we'll refly it on Saturday in the C-47. Uh, there's been no indication of a time yet. Uh, could be we may get it. In the morning, we may get it in the afternoon, in the evening, there's no telling. And I don't think there's been any word yet on, on an official release time. So, we have a backup plan in place in case uh, it, it becomes apparent that we're not getting it till, you know, like 8 o'clock East Coast time, which would be... One o'clock in the morning, UK time, and so we'll see. 
but we'll try to get that we'll we'll get that done one way or another. We'll still fly on Friday for Veterans Day Remembrance Day. Uh So, yeah. Well, we may alter it instead of flying from Bournemouth to Normandy on that day we may just do a flight across the UK from Bournemouth up north somewhere. And then do the other flight the next day. We'll see. Uh, what else? I think that's pretty much all the programming notes that I have. Morning, Amela. Thank you for the resub. Appreciate that. Appreciate all my subscribers, supporters, everything. Appreciate it. Yeah, we'll get started here. We'll give it a few more minutes. If anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, see Addies for the complaint department. Good morning, Mick. Uh, oh, okay, good. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, anybody have any questions or whatever? Of course, if you got complaints, Young Addies is the complaint department. <laughs> You can complain to Addies. That's his that's his role here on the channel. He's the complaint department. <laughs> Mella. Uh. <laughs> Has the weather calmed down there over there for you there, Mick? I saw your post uh, about the, the weather. It's been, it rained here sometime overnight. I don't think it was a massive downpour, but it did rain. And it's like humid again. It's about the stream we get technical issues. Yep, yeah, there you go. Well, sort it out, Addies. Sort it out. <laughs> oh, let's see. I'll give it a few more minutes and we'll get going here. We'll take it with the time. Once, once we're on the edge of the, oh I know what I can do while we're while we're waiting oops the imbalance there it is let's get our let's get our weight in Just to be on the safe side. There we go. <clears throat> All right. 
we've got that all done. Oh, seven people watching. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. We're going to get started here in just a moment. Just put some weight and fuel in the in our spawn here on runway 17 here in College Station, Easter Woodfield, right near Texas A&M. Matter of fact, there is Texas A&M Football Stadium. I didn't know this, but members of the Texas A&M Cadet Corps, uh, they were part of the movie um, A Few Good Men in the very beginning when they had that uh, Marine uh, drill group or whatever. That's cadets from Texas A&M did all that. They weren't actual, actual Marines. They were Texas A&M cadets that were dressed as Marines. All right, let's go ahead and get in here and get our time set. We've got our weather already set. And we will... used to be it was required if you went to school no we don't even have to adjust the time it already did it for us All right, let's go ahead and make sure we get everything set. Dial in our first nav point, which is at 1.12.50. There's that. And then what else do we have to do? I don't think we need the... Dome light. We're going to leave it on dim just in case, but I don't think we really need it otherwise. I think we can go ahead and turn off the taxi light, wing light, turn off the landing lights once we're in the air and on our way. Oops, let me get back here. Sorry, folks. Uh, Okay, Mella, we'll, uh, we'll get ready to go here in just a moment. We'll, we'll get our first picture here before we depart. Well, actually, let's do it this way. And there we go. There we are. All right. Let's um All right, let's
let's uh let's get back here and we'll get ready to go we've mucked about long enough now <laughs> uh let's see what the next heading will be on Alright, let's go. Uh, when are we back in A320? Um, I don't know, Joseph. I haven't really thought about that. <clears throat> Is there any particular reason why you want me to back in the A320? Well, I mean, if, if you're... I don't mind you asking. I'm just wondering if there a particular reason why. Or, or is there something you have in mind that you... I mean, that's why I'm trying... That's why I'm asking you why you're asking. <laughs> you don't have to be shy about asking or, or being... You know, Mick, Mick won't time you out just yet. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. If you got a, if there's something in particular that you want to see, then all you got to do is, is just tell me what's, what it is, and I'll see if I can do it, okay? Generally, though, I'm not doing the, uh, whole request this or whatever, but if it's something I can squeeze in, I'd be happy to try to do it. Ah, okay. Well, I'll... Tell you what, Joseph. farm with Nick tomorrow morning. So I go have to get ready to go for
Uh, well, if I can if I can come up with something tomorrow. <clears throat> Matter of fact, I know I can. It may not be the A320, but we'll do an A319 service. Oh, I've, I've got an idea. We're gonna go. We're gonna take off from. Um, I forget the name of the airport, but we're gonna head to Denver. Close enough to an A320. have an exact time that that's going to take place tomorrow but it'll be in the afternoon which would be about evening time for you so if I get my appointment done get back home it's probably gonna be like eight o'clock eight eight thirty maybe almost nine your time But it'll only be on Twitch. It's not going to get uploaded. I didn't upload the other day's, yesterday's flight to YouTube. I'm not going to load everything to YouTube. It's just, it's too much work for me. This one will go, but the, tomorrow's flight in the, a, in, the, in the A319 will not be on YouTube the next day. Or if I do, it won't be a premiere. I'll just put it on there and watch it again. One nautical miles. That's uh, So yeah, we'll do that. It's, but part of it is Joseph the the jetliners and stuff. It's not, you know, once we're in the air, we we uh, you know we hit the nav, you know, the autopilot, and the plane flies itself. It's not. Uh, there's not much of a challenge to it. Oof. 
it's kind of difficult to do. Uh, I mean, I, I don't mind the the jetliners and stuff like that. Don't I don't want anybody to think that I don't. But it's just it's there's not much of a challenge to it. You know, whereas this we're we're trying to climb and. and uh, more altitude here and it's a little bit of a crosswind it seems it's getting us off course a little bit here and there. But yeah, I'll squeeze in a flight for you tomorrow, Joseph. But it's not, I don't want anybody to, uh, I don't want you to think too that this is a, the new, <laughs> the new standard. I was going to fly when I got home anyway, but I'll. I was looking at um, I was last night I was kind of tinkering around on FS Hub. They have like a daily they have a short short distance, medium distance, long distance. They have three different flights that you can do for a daily challenge. And uh, so there was one up in Canada. I think it was like Calgary to Vancouver or something. Yeah, I think that's what it was. And so I looked I looked up or uh, the cool thing is on FS Hub if you have a sim brief account, you can link it and it'll it'll you know create the flight plan for you, right? Well, there's this one particular the way that they have it showing in Simbri, if you go to, there's, as you arrive into Calgary, there's some nav points you have to, that they, in, on the Simbri, that it's like go here, here, and here, and then you're, you're, you'll be lined up for that. And, uh, I was trying to get it to work, and it would not, I could not, in, in the, uh, in the world map, I could not add it. I could remove it, but it still wouldn't remove. Like it, it was, I don't know. It, it was very strange. The way that Sim Brief builds it, and the, what it shows in the in Sim uh, map to create a, a flight plan, uh, they don't necessarily. They're not jiving. I guess in a way. so even though all the navigation stuff should be up to date in the sim because every cycle when they update it is supposed to update the navigation stuff supposed to update in the sim as well i don't know what what's happening with that or why <clears throat> i tried to figure out a way to plug in each point manually in the um uh flight uh computer the only thing that you do is you pick your your departure and arrival airports, and then you can pick your departure runway, the departure route, your arrival runway, and, and all that kind of stuff, the approach and everything. But it doesn't give you any more choices than that. I think if I was on the computer, I might be able to do it, uh, actually build it manually. Or, or, well, actually, I would just import it in from SimBrief 
into the FMS. And, uh, and it would automatically operate in and set the bill. Oh, back up the So, but I, I did find out how, if, if you're at the gate, and I guess I can show that tomorrow as well. The, uh, how to, how to make it all work. Well, at least, kind of, we'll, we'll do that. We'll start up there at the airport, and then we'll head to Denver International. Mm, excuse me. Well, this thing is this not want to climb today. So yeah, we'll we'll cover that tomorrow as well. I, I kinda figured it out and it's the same I I think it's the same for most any jet miner. Let's see. At least on the Xbox. I don't the PC is different if you like I said, if you have a sim brief account um it'll you you put your departure you put your arrival and then pick your runways if you want different runways and what they suggest it'll give you the route and then you just import it into your uh fms you can link the kind of figure out how to do all that stuff. even in the A320 and A319 so I'm guessing it would be the same for like the 747 the 787 although the 787 and the 747 those would probably be high altitude low altitude or you'd have to plug in the cruising Yeah, I I had to. Well, I was gonna try to do something in the in the Embraer one ninety or one ninety five, right? And so I was like, okay, let me. And that was the one. It was Calgary. So I'm like, why can't I just build the build it in the FMS and, and include that that particular uh, portion of the arrival into Cal into uh, Vancouver and. Um, so I, because if you, the thing of it is, if you don't build the flight in the map, you know, and then, and then spawn in at your departure gate, for instance, right? Um, then it's, it's not like you have to basically put the information in and then say you want IFR clearance to your destination. So I was trying to figure all that out. I had to watch a quick little video, and I'm like, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense now. But um, the uh, but you can't put each point in individually. That's the only thing. Now, maybe on the computer part, you can. But I, I still think it would be... It, on if, if When I'm on the PC, because uh, I do have a SimBrief account, I'll just create the flight plan, import it into the FMS, and then it'll be all set. Um, <clears throat> so, but yeah, I'll, 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 we'll go over that a bit um, tomorrow, Mella. Uh, there'll probably be my appointments at 1. I don't know how long it's going to take, to be honest. Uh, and then I have to get back home to my when it's like across town it, not you know not it's not like super far but it's just it's not like going to the clinic you know where where it's just you know, so. 
anyways. Um, so yeah, I gotta I'll get that done and. Uh, but yeah, I'll put it on. I'll put it on YouTube. So you can, or well, you can rewatch it on on Twitch for like a week or two weeks or something. Like that, I think. But I'll I'll go over that at least as far as I understand it. Um, you know, so. This is the longest portion of our flight, and I think we've got a bit of a headwind slash crosswind. So it's probably good I tanked up. Um, yeah. Well, so you're talking about the you're talking about the PMDG seven thirty seven. Is that the one that you're having an issue with? I, I'm guessing, Amela. The, the the person probably to to talk to about that or watch is Captain Arash. I know he's, I think he's done some videos where he puts in the, uh, matter of fact, he flew, I think Friday or Saturday, he flew in the eight, the 730, oh, the CRJ. Oh, um, hmm. I don't know anybody, quite honestly, that flies the CRJ that would know how to put the information. But I'm guessing it would be very similar. You know what? Here, here's what we'll do, Abella. I'll, I'll once we land in Abilene, we're going to spawn in in the. Uh, I guess I'll do it in the A319 real quick. If we're going from like Abilene to Phoenix, right? Uh, we'll we'll do it that way. I'll. I'll uh, see if I can't create or show put it in there and then you can I'll put this this will be on YouTube tomorrow at around noon so yeah but uh yeah, I'll I'll see if I can. Maybe that'll give you some clue because I don't have the CRJ. I can't really. Uh, but I'm I'm guessing it's very similar. Because I think the only. I think they've kind of well. See on the PC side, I don't. I think you can probably be do more in depth stuff. You can edit out your flight plan, um, you know. But also, <clears throat> you real world airline pilots, whether they're regional or long distance, if there's weather, they can they can deviate. You know, they have. You know, they can say, "Oh, let's go over to this nav point." And, if there's weather, you know, we can climb above it or, you know, we can go around. Usually, you know, if they have to go left or right of the weather, they, they can pick a, a, they can get to a nav point on, uh, yeah. Um, but on the, so yeah, on the PC side, I'm, I'm guessing maybe you could do more or, um, but see, like what I noticed is, if I if I take a route from if I if I create a flight plan from Abilene to, to Phoenix, right, in Sim Brief, because I'm on the Xbox I can't you know populate it in, but if I look and I say, okay, I want this departure and I want this arrival portion, I want this ILS approach, I can mirror that kind of in the um in the in the FMS, but the points in between I can't necessarily edit, or I, not even this. I can't edit the the different nav points in between the the departure and the arrival. It automatically picks the the best route I think for for that flight. But I'll, I'll yeah, that's too easy. We I got time. I can I can do that at the end here. We'll we'll. Uh, We'll do that. So, time viewers. Well, thank you all for coming in. You don't have to lurk. Addies doesn't bite. <laughs> Come in and say hello.
Beck only bites when he's he's in the mood. <laughs> Generally, he's he's there in his cowboy boots and his Stetson. So that floats your boat. Yeah, see, there you go. Mick does, yep. So Mick in his cowboy boots and Stetson floats your boat. There you go. He asked nicely, he might send you a picture. Autograph, too. <laughs> Alright, 58 nautical miles to our vortex. Well, you know, he, he's still, he's probably still recovering from Chris's police officer video game from last night. I think he's, he's, uh, it's Monday, you know, he's running a little bit behind today. <laughs> he's probably trying to figure out what he's going to have for, for lunch, if he hasn't had lunch already. Joseph, what are you like today? Thank you all for coming in. Hopefully you're enjoying today's flight. As always, if not, see young Joseph, Mr. Adams for the paint department. We'll be happy to <coughs> write down your complaints. Whether or not I get the complaints is a different story. Which is, I think, the, the case for most any complaint department. Reckons. I think somebody else is streaming. He's, his his attention's everywhere right now, Mella. That'd be my guess. Either Joe's streaming or Jason's streaming. Even I guess. One of those two are streaming. Either that or or 
his mom's all up in his business today and trying to get and motivate young yaddies to do some work around the house. <laughs> Just trying to keep warm. <clears throat> oh my goodness, Joseph, you're acting like it's a the, the the ice age or something. Aha! Aha! Uh -huh. You can do it. <laughs> Joseph, <clears throat> if you want to go watch Jason, you can go watch Jason. It's fine. I have to keep trying to bounce back and forth. Well, if Jason, whatever Jason's doing is more is more exciting than what I'm doing. Go for it. It's all good. It'll be on YouTube later tomorrow. You know, we we know you well enough, Joseph. We know your 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 mo. Your, Modus operandi. Usually, when when nothing else is happening, you're in the chat, chatting away. So when you're not chatting very much, we know, I, I think everybody knows that you're over watching somebody else. Who's fast when there's food around? Yeah, of course. That's true. That's true. That is, it's okay. If you want to watch, what, I don't know what Jason's doing. I'm guessing construction or something or other. If you want to go watch Jason, it's fine. It's okay. No, no, you like to be everywhere on the internet, but you can't be. But that's. If you want to go watch Jason for a while? We still got plenty of flying, so if you want to go watch Jason, watch Jason. It's okay. And I'm playing the old. Uh huh. He's, he's multitasking, folks. He's playing old cod, he's watching Jason, he's watching me. He's trying to keep an eye on his bedroom door for when his mom pops in and gives him the what for. <laughs> the only time he's happy is if, if she says, lunch is ready. <laughs> sound good double chicken with bacon mm. it's interesting oh of course I know my hop we see a lot of that stuff probably used to be in the area there's there's not I think the only closest thing would be Denny's but that's over by the university. 
Uh, there's another place here called Friendly's, which is like a Denny's sort of place. They're not that great, to be honest. I've had I've eaten there a couple times. There's eh. <clears throat> there was so much more, like, see, I miss Waffle House. In, in this area. I mean, it's it's generally cheap food. It's greasy as hell, though, but you can get a lot of food for for not a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, somebody said there used to even be a, a, a Hooters in the area here, and they closed that down. Uh, there's a Red Robin Burger place across town. Like, all the main places are over closer to the university. Uh, and I think, you know, it's that, that's probably the same most any area where there's a university or a college. They, they have a... <clears throat> You know, there's more, more stuff closer to the campus, so that the students who don't have a car, for instance, like the over, they built a bunch of student housing uh, a couple years ago, and it's it's perfectly located because there's like a Chipotle, there's uh, a couple other places to eat there. No, it's not. It's not in the downtown. Like part of the living area for the students is downtown like their student housing is kind of spread out around the area it's you have the dorms and then you have like almost like apartments you know well dorms are like apartments but they have newer ones off campus and then they have a a dedicated shuttle bus for the school that picks people up along the way. A lot of the larger houses in the area have been turned into student housing. So, <clears throat> you know, there's like eight or nine bedrooms and you can get your own bedroom and have like a shared uh, kitchen and stuff like that. But no, downtown is... Downtown, they're trying to revitalize it, but it's uh, they torn like one of the parking garages. They completely uh, tore it down, um, and now they have like a just a one level parking lot, which is near the Boscovs in downtown there. <clears throat> but I I love that old parking garage because. If you get up to the top, not if, when, you can take the stairs. Uh, I mean, it, it was a pretty ratty looking parking complex. Uh, you could tell some homeless people squatted there every so often during the winter or rain or whatever. Like the, the stairwells were just like, eh, you know. <laughs> but. The view from the very top part of the parking garage, the, the top deck there, was, you know, you had a pretty decent view. Um, but, yeah, they uh, they tore all that down. There was, a, like, a, a walkway between the parking garage and uh, kind of like an office building sort of thing. It has, like, there's a, a couple banks in there, I think. Uh, Morbido, the the uh, gas station company, and one of the they have like a little regional office there downtown. But they took down the the walkways, and then they finally just did away with the the parking garage. They've been working on that since I think earlier this year, towards the end of that. They they started deconstructing it like they. Uh, the streets were closed off. Now, now it's a one-way street. You have to come in, kind of a roundabout way to to get in there to to, to park. And the they have street parking, and then now they just they paved over and put the, the parking lines there. And I guess they probably put an automated you know pay system. You know, like you go and you put your spot number in and all 
that. But part of it's still standing like it's connected to Boskov's. So I don't know if they're, they're probably trying to figure out how to, what they're going to do with that. But they, they, the the dynamic of the of the whole area has changed now because they put part of that as like a one way only, and uh, it, it it is controlling the traffic a little bit better, I guess. Thirty one. But no, the school, the school's like across town. It's up in, it's like, it's weird. Like, I don't know, like all these, all the schools, and I guess it's, it was the same in California. Like most every school is up on some hill, you know, <laughs> somehow, some way it's, it's up in a hill or something, you know, it's never just like, even the community college I went to is up up on a hill kind of it's just below the 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 county jail and the uh police academies there as well a lot of the students that are going to the police academy go to the community college to get there while they're going to the academy and then the academy students will kind of they'll there's like a, a loop around the you know, community college that they they use as like for their running their doing their academy runs. It's, it's a nice campus. I mean, a lot of the buildings have been, I think, when I first moved up here, some of the stuff was going through. Uh, they were renovating stuff. They were built, they built all new on-campus housing, and then they started off-campus housing was all built up new. It's, it's a very, it's one of the more well-known, I think it's like in the top, three or top five nursing schools in, in America. Uh, a lot of students come from Long Island. Their families are very well off, so they... A lot, I've seen a lot, of, a lot of people, like, when I've been over by the campus, you see Maseratis, you see a lot of Teslas, you see... It's not like your average student you know, beater car, like, you know, somebody gives them a little Toyota or a Nissan or something to get around. They're, a lot of the students are very, very wealthy families out from the city or be hard pressed to think that it's the, the faculty that's driving those kinds of cars <laughs> maybe the president of the school might but not not the average professor hello spider how are you take care Mella. i'll put i'll make sure i do that stuff and uh i think the closest let me hold on give me a second spider and i'll tell you what the closest oh we're near an airport because i hear the beeping like we're getting ready to go over uh something i heard it uh well, let me uh you're welcome Mella. see our first one uh gooch springs i think yeah we're near um Yeah. Uh, oops. 
KLZZ. That's the closest airport to where I'm at. That's our vortex is near there, so that if you're gonna spawn in spider, um, and this is the route, so you you'll be kind of coming in right about uh, near uh, Alpha Golf Juliet. So we have Bravo Whiskey Delta, Medley, Tom High, and then our ILS approach there on. We'll, we'll tune into the localizer. But Kale, Kilo Lima Zulu Zulu is the closest uh, airport to me right now, I believe. Actually, although it looks like we're going over, that looks like an airport. Uh, let's see. Oh, oh, okay, we're near Fort Hood. Okay. That's why we keep talking a great approach. I would say probably KLZZ might be your best. Yeah, that's Fort Hood. I, I'm wondering why we're talking a great approach. Yeah, we're flying over Fort Hood, Texas. Yeah, but probably by the time you spawn in and, and uh, get your aircraft set up there at KLZZ. I don't, I don't know what the size of the runway and all that is there, KLZZ, but you can... Uh, great approach, that's... we're just passing over... KGRK. That's the one we're passing over, right? For good airport there. Be my guess. Yep, I see you now. So yeah, we're heading to the... Uh, watch commercials. Okay. Uh, we're heading to Alpha Golf Juliet. That uh, Vortac. It's about uh, 17 nautical miles away. And then dial in for a view of and This was the longest part of the flight, so... Next one is 60 nautical miles. So we got two long parts, so. wants to climb and then it just kind of like no nah, I want to I think I know why I think I put too much weight back there in the tail 
Well, you would think the weight of the tail would sink the weight or tail down a little bit and the nose up. Steve joined us. I hopefully this plane will continue to climb a little bit. Oh, it now it feels like it's nosing up. Yep, there it goes again. We're climbing, and then the plane's like, no, nah, I don't like to climb anymore. Yeah. Well, you know, it looked like initially I thought maybe it, it could retract when I first started flying this, but I'm like, I don't know, it looks like it's pretty fixed. There's no doors or nothing. To... I mean, could you imagine how much quicker this plane would have been if they if they had retractable gear? The Junkers, they never were never able to kind of realize their their uh Ingenuity. Because of their role in, in the uh, Third Reich, but I think they were very much ahead of their time, te technology wise. I'm going to step away for just a second, folks. I'll be right back. Let's see here. Oh boy, we are going way, way off there. Oh my goodness. Fly this one for a bit, folks. Let's 
seven nautical miles. We should be, we should see an airport to our port side, our left side there, once we're near our, our Vortac. So yeah, once we land, I'm going to pop over into the uh, A319 there in Abilene. We're going to do a quick uh, tutorial as, as much as I understand it. Now, this is not going to be a <clears throat> de facto, you know, uh, I'm not a uh, subject matter expert. I'm just going to show, put this in for Mela. Um, although Amel is going to be flying the CRJ in about 12 days from now, we're going to do a uh, flight from Oakland to uh, Las Vegas. I'm going to try that in the 319, and Amel is going to be in the CRJ. Amel is on the uh, he's on the uh, PC, so he's got the CRJ. Uh, whereas we don't have it on the Xbox. Uh, I think it's another one of those Wassum fixes pending. Then we might get the CRJ whenever, if and when the Wassum fix actually happens. But it'll be kind of just my own rudimentary understanding of how to put a flight plan in the FMS. We'll wrap this up. But we still got it we still got a bit to go. Sixty nautical miles is our second leg here coming up. So we're almost over our um four tack and we should see somewhere around here. Should be off to our left. Not sure what how big of an airport it is, but we should be able to see some kind of an airfield. We're almost we're pretty much right on top of our vortex. Alright, let's go ahead and dial in our second one. What did I say it was? One Heading of three one one. All right, there we go. We got that. Did it with the fuel. 
that's my one of my biggest <clears throat> areas I need to work on I think I need, to, <clears throat> I need to get better at my fuel consumption and, and getting a better idea of how much fuel to add in And tomorrow, TBD, we're going to be, we'll be in the A319, we're going to go, <coughs> um, I, I have to look it up. I know we're heading to Denver, I can't remember the name of the other airport, but we're going to head to Denver uh, tomorrow, A319. Since Joseph misses the A320, the best we're going to do for him is the A319. A little bit of jetliner action in his life. <laughs> I'll be back in the morning uh, on uh, Watt Mickford's uh, stream. We're going to be on Farming Sim 22. Got a lot of planning to do. Money get some stuff and so we get some money back in the bank. And that'll be about seven o'clock Eastern time. We may have to get started. We may uh I'm just thinking, Mick, if if we start at if we try to get things going at about eleven thirty your time, six thirty my time, uh then uh, the uh, that way we can make sure that I can get on the farm and we we've got no issues so that we can start the stream right away and, and uh, all that. You know we seem to have those server issues lately. Although hopefully in the morning, my time in, you know, around about noon, your time will we'll be okay and we'll get, uh, get things going and not have too many issues. Try to get as much done before I got to go to my appointment. Wednesday we'll be back in the Eucharist 52. We're heading from Abilene over to Midland. Uh, Friday's flight, if you're not on the Discord, uh, we don't know what time. Uh, Sim Update 11 and the 40th anniversary stuff is going to be released. If it appears, if it seems, if it becomes very apparent, we have a Kukumu with a Sobo. Uh, yep. 
and uh, Microsoft that they're going to drag it out all the way to the late afternoon almost 8 o'clock in the evening East Coast time whatever if it becomes apparent that we are going to do a Veterans Day Remembrance Day flight over the UK we're not going to do the trip to Normandy we're going to do a flight from Bournemouth we'll head north uh, if you want to fly a Spitfire, uh, I'll be in the P-38 Lightning. We'll try to keep it where it's all within a distance that it's easy for everybody to fly to. Uh, we'll do that for Veterans Remembrance Day. Um, and uh, we'll do that. And then Saturday we'll do the flight from Bournemouth over to Bournemouth. And then, uh, barring any other shenanigans, <laughs> uh, we're going to do, we'll start taking the DC-3 across Canada. We'll even make a trip up to Yellowknife, the home of Buffalo Airways. Uh, I think still flies DC-3s. They may have had to get rid of the, entirely of their DC-3 fleet. But uh, we'll go up to Yellowknife up there in the Northwest Territories and uh, continue our way across Canada or the DC-3. Uh, that'll be like a fri every other Friday we'll do that. And then I think every other Friday we're going to try to do, do our tour of Africa and the Twin Beach. flying in other parts of the world uh, and then I think the other one that we want to start doing is go from like um, from like Mexico we'll zigzag our way down into Central America down into South America uh, I'm not sure what we'll fly in for that. I'll have to figure that one out. Uh, that might be the. Uh, I might do all that in Brayer. Uh, the the, uh, the prop liner. Uh, the 200, I think it is. Uh, we may do that. Oh no, uh, yeah, I did see the wind farm. I don't think so because they they would probably have to get the okay from Buffalo Airways for the DC three. Uh, yeah, I I couldn't see them. I mean, they would have to. Maybe if it was pay where they would say yes, but because we're getting it for free, I think it's going to be very very scant. Uh, on the uh, livery, we'll have to wait for four simmers or DC DC sceneries, DC sceneries, or something like that. Um, yeah. I think because we're getting it for free, that it's going to be kind of like the stock stuff that came with the Sim when it first came out, especially on the Xbox side. We're not, we're not going to get a whole lot as far as livery goes. It'll be up to somebody else to come up with livery designs for it. And I mean, F Four Simmers does pretty good. Like they create a lot of good stuff, and they're not very expensive as far as their liveries go. So that's a good thing. 
Yeah, I, I can't see us getting. I'd be surprised if we did. On, on the PC side, I'm sure somebody will create the colors for it. The closest we would get color-wise would be the uh, Emerald Island Airways or something like that. I, I was, on the PC, I'm sure somebody will do a free... Um, a free livery for it. Well, four simmers. I, I mean, they seem to be. They're doing a lot of work. Although they, they're. I think they're still releasing stuff for the A320. Although I think that market is oversaturated this at this point. LVFR is doing their own for their A321 and A319. Uh, they're adding stuff. Whenever they update the aircraft, they may put in a another livery every so often. Uh, the um, So yeah, but I think four simmers, F -sor F sores, FSORs or something, and DC scenery. I think that between the three of them, somebody will come up with some some classic DC three liveries, and they're all usually pretty well priced for you know eight to ten liveries or something. So, yeah, I don't, I don't, but I don't. Think I'm... But on the on the PC side, I'm sure somebody's already got some ideas. Well, yeah, that. Well, like four simmers, I think for the stuff that they've done, they release it and then they they know some of the imperfections, so they're already working on a on a patch for it. I mean, I, I don't. It, it's kind of difficult to do everything exactly. I mean, I don't know what the what do they call it? the SDK or something like that. However, they whatever they use to create that stuff, I think, is probably not a very perfect. It, it takes. It, I would think it would take time to get you know used to how it all goes together and, and how to put things where they where you want them to be <clears throat> you know it's kind of like painting painting cars in, in Gran Turismo or, or in um, uh, Forza right there's limitations and you're trying to put stuff a certain play, way and all that it doesn't always go the way you expect it to and so I I think that they they're, they're you know and because that's all stuff that gets updated, whatever they thought they knew goes right out the door. Oh, yeah. Um, I think that's something they're trying to work on, is to do away with you have to have this in order to see it. But I think it's probably easier to do that on the PC side, because most everybody, like, I, I belong to Firefly Air on FS Hub. On the PC side, there's FS Ho or Firefly Air liveries for your aircraft, but I can't download that on the Xbox. So if, if I fly, if I were to fly somebody who's also in Firefly Air and has that livery, I I'll never be able to get it. You know, so that's another re one of the other things that I want to get the PC for is there's more stuff like that. Is it's a little bit more simple. Um, To, uh, uh, solving that problem I think is a bit more simple but it's it's hard to say I don't know it's one of those things that just it's the uh, it's not something that's not gonna it's not gonna be changed any, anytime soon You know, certainly not on the Xbox side. So. Anyways. But we'll see what we get Friday. But I just don't... I'm, 
I really wish they would just commit to a time so that everybody knows or at least kind of give us an idea but I think my gut instinct is they're going to drag this thing out all day they're going to get everybody fussing in the forums and, and what not asking over and over and over and the moderators are going to have to be like stop asking you'll get it when you you know it, that's it's so it's almost like they invite that sort of drama you know so but I, I i'd be surprised if we get it first thing in the morning but we'll see well yeah i mean it's pretty flat here any wind that does blow uh it's not obstructed I don't know how much power it really generates for the area. I mean, I don't know. You know, like coastal wise, it would probably be better if it was along the coastline because it you get the winds off of the Gulf of Mexico. But inland, I don't know that there's that much wind to generate any reasonable amount of power. But I'm not a meteorologist or a, I don't study the wind patterns. So I would I would venture to say if it was along the coast of of Texas along the on, along the Gulf Coast that'd probably be more power generated there. But also then if you have a hurricanes, a lot of that stuff would get damaged too. So. Inland you have the tornadoes you got to worry about. <clears throat> but. So we're we're getting there we have another i think our third longest portion of the flights coming up here we got 35 nautical miles to our first fixed point there at bedley coming leaving from uh bravo whiskey delta head to medley 35 nautical miles and then you should be getting ready to land hop over into the uh do a quick tutorial sort of thing at least again it's not don't take it for that I'm some sort of guru this is just my understanding of how to do things so don't think that I have all the answers I, I just I try to find solutions offer up what I think solves stuff and if it doesn't work for other folks Uh, a huffy and start start getting nasty in the chat. So try to do stuff as I understand. So. I have to say, LVFR has really impressed me with their their two airbuses that they've released they are they're still releasing updates they're still fixing you know working on their stuff they don't just sit there and go like oh we got our money and bye no <clears throat> they've been working on updates they're continually improving their product which is good uh, they just don't say oh you get what you get and thanks for the thanks for the money <clears throat> only people in their 20s have all the answers <laughs> Well, they like to think so, but I don't know. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll do that. Uh, but again, 
the the CRJ system may be slightly different, but I think pretty much what I'm going to do in the in the A319 will be very similar to what Amela can do in the CRJ. But also, I, possibly on the computer, there might be more things that can be done on the PC side than, than, there, than what I can do on the Xbox. But at least this will get... Matter of fact... No, you know what? We'll, we won't go to Abilene. We're going to spawn in over in Oakland. Yeah, let's do it that way since... Mel and I are going to do a flight in a couple of weeks from Oakland down to, to Las Vegas. Matter of fact, yeah, let me change that. That'll probably be easier for Amilla to follow along since we'll do that on the 19th of October. Or November, I mean. <laughs> 19 nautical miles. So our Fix our first fix. We need to go on a heading of two meters seven. Uh, we also have a uh, localizer DME to dial into there for uh, Abilene. Bit of a river, closer to the river. All right. Oops. Make sure, I don't get too far off track here. <clears throat> yeah, we'll, we'll spawn in over. Oh. I did have a look what airlines so <clears throat> apparently spirit does flights from oakland down to las vegas so we'll do a spirit livery oh when we fly on the 19th i'll be in a spirit livery i know roughly the um which gate it departs from so we'll, we'll spawn in at that gate and we'll start things up and then we'll put the stuff in the flight computer uh no i'm just on uh, a few clouds uh, it's uh, <clears throat> I got the weather preset I bought that uh, months ago so I just put um, I put a few clouds in for the for the weather sometimes the that preset and the real life weather are very similar but um, I've, I've flown it where the live weather is, is as good or better than the preset so um yeah, I try to flying live weather in this. <clears throat> it's not always easy because even with like a localizer approach, if the weather's really bad, because um, technically flying VOR to VOR is instrument flight rules, but the sim doesn't always take it that way. So even if if I come in or I have a plan, the plan says I'm coming in on this approach. 
the 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 ATC doesn't always recognize it. So if the weather's really bad, I can't. I have to override it and say, you know, we're we're gonna land um, because we have instruments that allow us to dial in the localizer DME, for instance. So um, yeah, I I looked it up. VOR to VOR is technically it's not VFR flying; it's IFR. We just don't have like an assigned altitude for us to be at or at 13 nautical miles. We're almost there, folks. We're getting there. I do appreciate everybody coming in and hanging out today. For those of you who lurk, thank you for lurking. <laughs> I guess you're working and lurking. I don't know. Friday, Friday, we have a plan, backup plan in place if the uh, C-47 doesn't get released in a reasonable time. And if, if that's the case, then we'll do that flight Saturday, but Friday we'll do, if nothing else, we'll do a memorial flight, uh, Veterans Day slash Remembrance Day over the UK. Bournemouth, uh, I don't know where exactly in the UK we'll go, but we'll... We'll fly for a little bit on on Friday, one way or the other. Let's see, what is that? Is that uh, one ten three zero. Dial in one ten three zero over here. But yeah, there's a there's a weather preset uh, in the marketplace. I can't remember the name of it, but it, it gives you many options. You can have like thunderstorms. Uh, you can have all kinds of stuff. Um, I only fly live weather if I'm flying in like a, a jetliner. Uh, but the other stuff usually I'll either have it'll be sunny or it'll be uh, some clouds is the preset that I usually use. But that way you don't, uh, it'll give you that standard uh, altimeter 29 or 9 or 2. So you don't have to really worry about that. Well, we're, we're in route here. 
but let's get past this view art in me. Let me just start putting this stuff together here for uh, entry here. Almost over that. Over that, all right. Two nine or seven will be our next heading. Approach is going to be on three five.
Need to clean my throttle potential tension meters again. Getting twitchy. Hmm. If we keep that distance, right, and we get to about 30, I oh, salty air, oh, okay, um, about 35 nautical miles, if, if that holds, if we keep that distance and we get about 35 nautical miles or so, we should be near our... This on. This is here. So if we keep that tuned in and we get to 35 nautical miles or thereabouts, we'll know we're in the right spot for our <coughs> our um, our fix. We're going to do what we normally do. We're going to come in kind of flat on the approach, try to bleed off some of that speed, get over the over the threshold. we got a very long runway, so if we hover a little bit to get, uh, before we set down, it'll be fine. We've got plenty of runway to use on, on, on our runway that we're landing on today, so we'll be fine with that. Um... We'll go do our thing in the A319, the FMS setup, and then we'll call it a day. <sighs> going for almost a couple hours now. Boy, this is going to be a long upload to YouTube today. <laughs> I'm going to have to get this one going <clears throat> right away today. Such as the joy of flying over Texas, big state, a lot of distance to cover. <laughs> Planning on my fetching. Yeah, <clears throat> I have to come in. I'm I'm learning that this is one of those planes that you gotta have to come in a little bit flat on the approach. Otherwise, we're coming in too steep and trying to bleed off speed at the last minute, and that doesn't work. If we're coming in on a a little bit shorter of a runway than what we've got. I mean, we've got plenty of room today. So, like I said, if we float for a little bit and bleed off speed, it should be perfect. We've got more than enough runway for that. And I don't know where we're going to get told to go parking at. Um, so, we'll, we'll figure all that out once we get there. And uh, we'll wrap things up for the day. Uh, I will be, like I said. Oh, uh, well, I call it hovering, you know, kind of like just getting over the runway and still kind of keeping the plane level and still descending, but also enough that we're bleeding off speed before we set down, so it's a little bit better. Of, yeah, hovering. That, that's what I call it, hovering. Um... So that's probably not the proper aeronautical term, but uh, that's what I call it. Uh, so tomorrow, uh, about 7 o'clock Eastern, I will be joining Mick. 
his FS22 farm. So do give us a watch. We should have a bit of a laugh. And uh, 13, almost 14. It's good that we have this equipment. There's nothing wrong with using every trick that we have available to us to help us navigate. So we know the distance between that fixed point and that VOR DME behind us is 35 nautical miles, roughly. So as long as we follow, we stay on that heading as best as we can, and then also check our distances here. So we're almost halfway there. And then we'll... We should be good to go. We utilize every bit of trickery we have. Uh, so yeah, we'll be <clears throat> we'll be doing that tomorrow. We got a lot of planning to do. A lot of stuff to get done, so we're gonna get that going. Got to get Nick some money back in the bank because he spent a bunch of money the other day. He's broke, <laughs> so we got to got to make up make up some money. We're doing some cotton and another cotton, and I think more sugar cane. We got to harvest some sugar cane. Got a lot to do. So we're going to try to get as much done before I got to go for my appointment. So, so yeah, about if if we start talking at about six thirty, Mick, and making sure that I can get on the farm to try to sort out any other little hiccups, and then hopefully we'll uh, we'll get going there. Try to get as much done as we can. Well, we had to we had to figure out a different way to do it, Spider Steve, uh, <clears throat> because we had um, yeah uh, we were using a kind of a what's a bad way of harvesting it, but we we had to we had to kind of approach it from a different perspective and and. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna do that. It should go a lot quicker. We got some different equipment to do that, and uh, so that should go a lot a lot quicker than it did the other day. But we yeah we got a lot to do on the farm. Trying to make the most of it, and yeah do do watch if you want. To have some viewers. Ooh, somebody sub. Uh, expired. So. No, Mick resubbed. Amela resubbed. That's okay. Whoever, if I appreciate all the subs, if you can afford it, I greatly appreciate it. If not, it's quite all right. It is not required to be a part of the channel. Twenty nautical miles away from our VORDME behind us, so we're we're getting there. We got about fifteen more nautical miles to go. 14. Yep, 14 nautical miles to go to our fixed point. All in our localizer DME. From here on, it'll be a very quick. Uh, I think our next stage is like nine nautical miles. Yeah, between Bedley and, and Tom High. And then, uh, let's see, another.
seven nautical miles into our runway. Get on the ground, do our thing in the 8319. I know I keep saying it, but I gotta remind myself otherwise I'll forget. And then uh, we'll wrap things up. Okay. You know, I'm thinking, Mick, if, if you want, after I take a little short break, if you want to keep the farm open, we'll try to get a few things done today, and then that should help uh, make the make things go a little bit smoother tomorrow. Like if we want to want to uh, plow and, and and get some stuff seeded and planted today, if you want to do that, I've got the time. The only thing I got to do real quick before I forget is I got to run down the street to the laundromat and get some chains so I can do laundry as well <laughs> so, if you want to do that we can do that uh, today if you want to get on there uh, keep it open and then I'll get some stuff done so that way we have a, a bit more uh, time available for us more done tomorrow, but that's up to you. Let me know what you think. I know you guys are doing Sniper Elite tonight. You and Chris, I think, are doing that. Yeah, if you want to do that tonight, or once I get done with everything here, and I, I just, like I said, i got to run down the street there to the laundromat and get some change and be ready to do other stuff. But if not, that's perfectly fine. I figured I'd, I'd offer Are you talking Abilene Approach? Nice. Must be within shouting distance of Abilene Approach. Or Abilene itself. 28. 7, just under 7 nautical miles. Dumping some altitude here. All right, folks, we're almost there. We appreciate you coming in and hanging out today. Thank you, Spider Steve, for joining in on the flight. Nice to have you along. Another Euchre's fellow Euchre's pilot to share the airways with. All right, just about five nautical miles, just under five nautical miles to our fixed point there. I love technology, it has worked in our favor today. Use wrong with like I said using every trick in the book okay 
Okay, that's fine, Mick. <clears throat> I just figured I'd offer. If not, it's that's perfectly fine. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, no problem. No problem at all. Five. Next heading. There's two nautical miles left here. We should see a river. river. Should be different. Riverbed there that the uh, fixed points kind of be at. Less than one nautical mile, so it should be like right around here somewhere coming up here in front of us. Just to stand by. Just to move me. Move this over to here. Two, five. No, three. No, two, nine, five. We should be able to go ahead and call in for our ending. There it is. Crusty salute for the instructions. All right, there we go. There's our approach. Flaps down. Right. <clears throat> uh, 
I was just making a drink for me and my mom. I'm here now. Oh, Joseph, you and your drinks. Are you like... Be along. We're gonna land and we're gonna do a quick thing in the uh A319. Coffee at this late in the day. I couldn't do coffee this late in the day on your part of the world there, Joseph. I <clears throat> I wouldn't sleep. Very irritable. I'd get a freaking headache. One time when I was a security guard, I drank a whole pot of coffee before I went to work. That was the biggest mistake I ever made. Oh, I was so miserable the entire time. Oh my goodness. I had such a headache it wasn't even funny. <laughs> oh, because I was working like a grave shift. And I was like, I gotta, I was, I didn't sleep that much, like, earlier that day. Oh, I was, I was so miserable. Yeah, that was a bad decision. can only have one cup. If I have any coffee, it's one cup a day. That's it. I cannot have any more than that. It must be. If I have anything else, I have any more. Like even caffeine and soda, if I have any of that during the day, it does affect my sleep. All right, we're on final approach, folks. Relax. We'll be on the ground here momentarily. Here in Abilene, Texas. Local time is 7.24 in the morning. Joseph has his tea. Got his cuppa. He's squeezing the cat because he's cold. <laughs> Cat's trying to get away. About ready to take a swipe at Joseph's face. <laughs> Look at that, we got a nice uh, street leading us right to the airport as well. Leave the cat alone, Joseph. <laughs> Let the cat go. Cat's already warm enough with his fur. Trusty salute. You got it, Abilene approach. Tower, whatever, whoever I'm talking to, somebody. fuel but that's okay if we wanted to continue on from here I think we would have enough fuel to get to Midland Texas 
Edmund Odessa. Anybody know? Where? What movie was Odessa famous for? Anybody want to hazard a guess? I'll, I'll even go go so far as to tell you it's considered a romantic comedy. The movie. Although I don't I don't watch it for the romantic comedy. I watch it because it's, it's just, I watch it more for the comedy, not so much the romance. Movie Tin Cup with Kevin Costner, Don Johnson, Rene Russo. Very, well, I guess he was kind of young in that movie. Very lovely, Rene Russo. Each Marin. Pretty funny movie. I watched it the other day. All right, here we are, folks, coming in. Coming in kind of slow. Ooh, a little bump there. All right. Well, we could have hovered a little bit over the runway a bit. We'll uh, get off the runway there for uh, Spider Steve. On behalf of myself and the entire flight crew, would like to welcome you to Abilene, Texas. Local time, I do believe, is 7.23 in the morning. I understand and appreciate the fact that it's Monday. It's Monday. And you chose to spend your Monday with us. Okay. Going to the fuel stand. If I can get the plane moving again. Come on, plane. I think I put the brake on. No, I did not. Okay. So sit tight, folks. Let's get over here to our parking spot here by the fuel stand. And then we'll go hop in over on the A319, do a little... Do a little, uh... What, uh... Tutorial... wrap things up I watched Tin Cup I watched over the weekend I watched uh, a few good men really, really enjoyed that movie watched uh, what else did I watch uh, I've been watching Ice Pilots Northwest Territories again and uh, what else um I want to watch something else the other day. 
but movie I hadn't seen in a while. Uh, thank you, Joseph. You're so swell, young man. You're you're such a swell young man, eh, Joseph. runway is that they're saying we got to cross over. I don't know if this is it. Yeah. Definitely overdid it with the, with the fuel. Too bad of a landing, I guess. Close enough for government work. <laughs> Looks like it's way over there. Yeah, that's all right. We'll park here. We don't need fuel. We're not, we're not continuing on in our flight today. I don't think this is necessarily a parking spot. Make our own here by the by this gate. You know, for a large international airport, there doesn't seem to be much of a of a terminal here. Oh, strange. All right, let's go ahead and turn our lights off. Let's hit our batteries. There's one. There's two. All right. Let's get the numbers in on uh, over here. Uh, 12, 21. Oops. 21. And, oh. 21. And we arrived at 13, 14, 24. Submit. All right. Oh, look at that. Okay. Uh, let me just do this real quick. Two hours and three minutes, roughly, flying. Let me just update my other tracker over here real quick, and then we'll get over into the, uh, let's see, today's the seven. Uh, KCLL to KABI zero two zero two four six. 
just at least put that in and then we'll all right there's that okay back to the main menu all right so here's what we got let's do this go oops Here we want the, this one. And Oakland, California. Alpha 9, or 9 Alpha is our departure gate. Let's go ahead. Oh, uh, live weather as well. Just make sure. I don't know if that will affect anything, but. Oh, it's nighttime there still. It's uh, 6.30 in the morning. No, not nighttime, early morning. That's okay. All right, so this is what I understand to be the... Um, how this is going to work. Now, the key is, of course, you don't want to... Uh, We don't want our, our uh, oh, look at that, sun, sun, sunrise here. We don't want our co-pilot talking just yet. We want to get the aircraft started up so we can program in our flight. that Our engine started so we have power okay so here's the here's the trick Started up first, and then we'll finish up our. Do our stuff here. All right. All right, so the trick of this is going to be, gotta come down here to this little, right. so we wanna go to uh, flight plan. Right. Nope. There we go, uh, the initial, INT. Right. And so we're leaving from K-O-A-K, K-O-K, And we're going, so we put the slash in, we're going to Las Vegas. K L, oops. L A S, right? And then we hit from and to right there. Bam. Now, cruise, we can put like, uh, we'll put three, two, 
zero. Oop. Cost index for whatever reason, I think uh, we'll just put five zero, right? It's not a all right. So now we go to flight plan, right? Departing from uh, departure, we're on three zero, is our, our, our departure runway. that one and then our departure route is this one right here candle five that's like over where candlestick park used to be right we're gonna pick that and then we're gonna hit insert now let's, let's say candle five intel should be here. and then Intel right there. Okay. And then so now that part's there. And we go back to flight plan. Oops. Destination. We're arriving on runway two six left. LS two six left. And our approach should be This one right here. And Fletcher should be our. Now see, that's going to be the, the, the tricky part is there's no. Uh, I guess we'll go with. Uh, there we go, Fletcher. So now everything's built in, right? in our flight plan. Oops. So now we go to plan here. And that should give us our, our route. As a matter of fact, we, we'll zoom out just a bit to see everything. Now we can check it all, right? Using this little arrow key. There we go. All right. So it'll go show all of our... We'll go through every point to make sure that it's it's in the system all right now see this is one of those problems let me get back here to the to the chat so if you notice we, we were getting close and then it goes back here to uh our that's part of our arrival right going into uh, I think that's like our, our our star or whatever and then it goes here and then it so that's one of the things that I, I don't know why it does that unless that's like if we miss the approach it, that would be the, the go back to point in the flight I'm guessing here I don't know for sure but my theory would tell me that if we had a misapproach, we would go back to that arrival portion and line back up again. Because I think, you know, Las Vegas is a pretty busy airport in general. So that we, if we had a misapproach, we would declare it and then we would go direct to there and then fly the, the arrival and the approach again. Unless, unless we, or if it was something uh, that we had no control over if we wanted to we could go we could pick a different approach now that's something we could probably change in here if necessary um, but I don't know if it would how the ATC would interact with it okay but that's how you build it you can only pick your departure runway your departure routes and in, in, in the initial nav point and then your arrival portion and your approach and all that. <clears throat> the rest of the stuff in between, at least, I can't build it, 
you know, manually in the FMS. There might be a way to do it, but I have not found a way, at least on the Xbox side, to manually put in each point and pick like a different route to get to Las Vegas from Oakland. So, but through through SimBrief, this is the this the information that I use, the departure and stuff like that is what I use to put that into the FMS here. So that's that's how we came up with that. But yeah, that's very... Now, clearing the flight plan, I, I don't know how to do that. Like if we wanted to erase it and start from scratch. I guess you would just have to restart the flight and then you would have like a... basically a, a, a clean sheet to work with. But on Oakland, three, runway 30 is the traditional departure and landing runway. I've never, ever seen the 30 is right there. I've never seen any aircraft come in from the opposite end or take off from over here. It's always been here on 30. So I'm guessing with the way that the, <clears throat> with the, the tr amount of traffic and everything, and you got where that 78X is at, or Bakhid is, that's San Francisco right over there. So I think this is the preferred, this is the de facto departure and arrival runway here for any jetliner traffic. I don't think there's room for a 747. I think it can handle the Airbuses. Maybe maybe and, and 737s but larger traffic the 787s and the 747s generally all take off in sfo so there's way more um and then the other thing too would be if if we were going to fly this we would contact clearance and request uh clearance for an ifr flight There we go. So it's filed in here. All we have to do is say, "Can we can we fly this route now?" Or we're asking for permission. Basically, that because that's what you know, um, based on weather and everything. That's what the 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 crew would traditionally ask for. Then is saying because they would plug it all in. And then, uh, but, you know, the airliners, they have pre-approved company routes. You know, you fly this way, and the only way you can deviate, I think, is um, if you have, like, a, um, uh, uh, like, if there's weather or something, um, so then we can even ask to push back. And then we would taxi over the flight. So that's how you do that. And then we'd of course we would add in our our on our Performance, we would put in the 10 for the flaps right there that button and then all the V information will pop in if we just click those that'll pop in and then yeah so 150 so there we go that's already there Maybe here to the left one so that's is uh, no 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 Joseph I'm 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 just showing this is for Amela for <clears throat> hopefully this helps Amela set up a flight from like on the 19th for instance when we do the flight from Oakland to, to Las Vegas you can pick um you can you can put in your departure uh like I said, uh, well, anyway, it, I'm just showing this for Amela, Joseph, not, not for, we're not doing another flight. I just wanted to 
because the Mello is flying a different jet than the Airbuses. So I think uh, this is the way. One, two. How are we flying on runway one two? I put in three zero. That's odd. Runway one two. Hold on a second. Hold on. How is that possible? Well, the wind is blowing. Oh, well, according to this, we would go all the way. That's odd. I've never... So they're saying live weather. <clears throat> Runway 12 is the, the preferred departure today. Wow, okay. I've never seen that. It, not to say that it doesn't happen, but I always thought... 3-0 is the preferred departure and arrival. Wow, okay, so... <clears throat> um, so, Simbrief, even though it told us runway 30, that's why it's important to check your weather. <laughs> okay. If we had checked our weather, we would know that runway 30 is going... We would have a tailwind. So we would have to change our... No, okay, now let's check this. Now this, here's another good learning example, right? Let's go to our, um, let's go down here so we can actually see. So if we go here and we go departure, and we go to one, two, and this is the preferred this way here, and then this one. Okay, so now it should show a different departure. Okay, let's let's zoom out here again and then go to plan. Okay, so we were able to change that. So it should have all that new information. So it changed because of the weather, but our arrival part didn't change as far as we know. Now we could change that too. Let's look at Las Vegas weather. Which runway? So two six left, we could do it, but it's got a crosswind. One nine right is the preferred one because it's got a headwind right now. So we could even change that in the system. So let me go to sim brief and go from two six left to one nine right. That doesn't change anything really. The only thing that would change is the ILS approach. Thing. So, <clears throat> so we can change it before we depart. So let's say. Our company said runway 30 is the departure runway because typically that's what we were used to. At least I am in Oakland. But if the weather, the wind shifts and we have to take off from 1 2 to head into the wind, help with the takeoff, then we can change it in the FMS. We just pick a different departure in, in runway and then the route and, and, and then the initial information so that w once we're in the air the plane can navigate correctly so that should work in theory that should work for the crj as well um <clears throat> so i'm hoping that's the case for amela that what i just did also works in the crj because they should be very similar fms systems i think um if not, I mean, there's got to be something in there that's very similar to this little setup right here. Right. So, um, 
but yeah that that should work that way so hopefully that helps them out but anyway that will do it for today <laughs> uh, but yeah good learning stuff always check the weather uh I use, I, I put this in and I'll put it in again. And I'll, uh, if you're not sure, this is a really, for those of you who are watching, if you're not sure how I find this information, go to this, click that link, and that will tell you. And this is the same thing that I use for when I fly, like today's flight in the Euchre's 52. I put the, put... You know, Abilene, which is the best runway to land on. 3-5 right was one of them, okay? Uh, so I can take that information, and then I can find... 3-5 uh, right had an ILS approach. I can tune into the localizer. From there, I find my, my, my fixed points to help me get lined up on 3-5 right, Okay. But using that information at least as a base, you could say, okay, if I depart from this run or land on this runway, which one is the best way to head? Which runway has a, a headwind? So I know I'm heading into the wind to help with the landing. And then also if I have to, to go around, I have enough wind that I, it'll help with the lift of the plane. You know, we just go max power and... and pull back on the stick and, and we're back in the air and we go around. So, uh, but if there's a crosswind, if that's your only option, then you pick whichever one you think will help you get on the ground the best with the crosswind. I prefer, if I, if I have to do a crosswind landing, I prefer like a longer runway so I have enough time to, to fix any... Anytime I'm getting blown off the, you know, off course, off the runway, offline. Um, so anyway, that is it. Uh, hopefully, Amela, this helps you. Uh, check it out. Um, if you have any questions, you know, you can always hit me up later, Amela. I know you're probably going to watch this <laughs> sometime. Uh, but... You know, you can always DM me if you need to, if you need any other assistance, and I'll try to walk you through it. Um, but that's how you do that. So, uh, but that's how we're going to do it when we fly this on the 19th of Octo of November. I almost said October again. I don't know why. In 12 days, on a Saturday, we're going to do a flight from, from um, Oakland to Las Vegas. So I'm going to do the very similar, uh, but I'll, I'll do it again tomorrow, but we're going to do a flight from, uh, matter of fact, let's go here. It'll be live weather. We're going from, I think it's KCJL. Let's go to the, let's go to the, um, all right. So we just got to find Denver. Mm, excuse me. So Denver. Oh, I think her. Is it Kale? No, it wasn't that. So, nope. It was over here somewhere, I think. See if I put in KCJL. Nope. Nope. Is it KJCL? Anyway, uh, I'll I'll figure it out. I I I looked at it before. It's not Salt Lake City. It's somewhere up in here. Rapid City? No, 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 no. Uh, Rapid City Regional. Maybe it was Rapid City Regional. Over to. No, it was over this way. Anyway, 
I don't remember. It's not like it wasn't Salt Lake City. Was it? No, I don't think so. It was up above. It was up here somewhere. Anyway, um, so that's what we'll do tomorrow. I'll I'll figure it out. <clears throat> um, if nothing else, we'll go from Salt Lake City to Denver in the A319. Uh, we'll do like uh, in the um, da, da, da. they have like American, or I know they have American United. There we go. We'll do United Airlines regional flight. Um. So yeah, that's what we'll do. To, uh, to Denver tomorrow. So, so yeah, that's what we'll do. Anyway, that will wrap it up for today, folks. Almost three hours. Goodness gracious. Too much. Too much entertainment for Addies. We have to cut you back now, Addies. We have to cut you off. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, anyway, uh, I will see you all tomorrow on Mix Farm about 7 o'clock in the morning. Um, but, uh, We'll try to get going, get things started, so we can uh, get uh, get things done there on the farm for him. Try to get him some more money. He's 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 trying to sell, but he might be coming up short. Uh, but yeah, do do give us a check out. Uh, put it. Matter of fact, let me give him one more shout out. Over on his Twitch, the Posh Channel, as we like to call it. So. Uh, if you want a good laugh tomorrow on a Tuesday morning or afternoon, whichever the case may be, do uh, do check us out on the farm tomorrow. Uh, we're back Wednesday, 710 Eastern, 1210 UTC slash UK, continuing from Abilene to um, Abilene to uh, Midland, Odessa. Uh, I will be back uh after the farm, uh, I'll be back later in the afternoon. We'll do that flight into Denver. We'll have some live weather. Maybe it'll be a little bit snowy. Who knows? You never know. Make Joseph more chilly than he already is. <laughs> but anyway, uh, do enjoy the rest of your Monday morning, afternoon, evening, early Tuesday. You know, it's already 10 o'clock here on the East Coast. Might be Tuesday morning somewhere in the world already. Who knows? You know, those time zones. Pfft. Crazy stuff. Absolute crazy stuff. I have been and always shall be your host and pilot, Uncle B. Until tomorrow. Peace. Live long and prosper. You're welcome, Joseph. <laughs>